one of the real challenges of sustainability is, of course, accommodating sustainable, uh, uh, sustainability in the face of growth. And of course, that's a challenge the world faces as a whole, but specifically today, it's a challenge that we face here at UVA. And I'm frequently asked, uh, well, why does the University of Virginia continue to grow? And there are a series of uh, answers to that that are here in the form of bullets. I won't have the time today to get in depth with any of these in, in particular, but uh, they are uh, clearly a space deficiency, which those of you that are faculty and certain of our programs are well aware, uh, that space deficiency is related to some degree to number two, which is that we have an agreement with the, the state, the Commonwealth of Virginia, that we will accept a minimum of 150 new students each year. Uh, this was uh, agreed upon after a series of uh, arduous uh, negotiations with the state. Uh, as you well know, there are other state universities and colleges that are growing significantly more rapidly than the university. And in fact, I think we're the slowest grower of any of the state institutions of higher learning. Uh, one of the reasons, of course, for that is that the state is growing. Uh, the population is changing significantly. Uh, again, we're faced, as many states are, with an increased number of uh, well-trained uh, high school graduates who are ready to go on to college and university, as well as graduate students that uh, seek to uh, further their educations and, and research. And so we do have space that we have to build in order to accommodate uh, that change, and it's simply not classroom space. Uh, and, and additionally, of course, we house all of our first year students uh, on grounds and increasingly a higher percentage of those that are beyond first year. In fact, more than 40% of UVA students live on grounds. Uh, there will be increasing pressure to add graduate students. Uh, as we look to these next uh, highlights from the Commission on the Future of the University, uh, which is just concluding its work this year, uh, two emphasis, one in science and technology, which again, the state and the nation, if you will, is promoting that uh, for us to continue uh, on the vanguard of science and technology leadership in the world, which of course is part of our having a normally healthy economy. Um, and in order for us to maintain our status, we do need to promote that activity in the uh, hallmark institutions and, uh, for science and learning and, and technology, and UVA is among that group. Uh, so therefore, we do need to build some of the facilities I'll show you in a couple of minutes uh, in order to have adequate um, capabilities for doing that scientific research for advancing technology. So you'll see that we are indeed building a new information technology engineering building. Uh, we are building a new medical research building. Uh, we are building a new uh, arts and sciences research building for the basic sciences and, and uh, the life sciences. So those sort of things uh, are to accommodate, if you will, the term state of the art uh, in terms of being able to teach, which is our principal mission along with research, and community service. So when I move into that last bullet, uh, first and foremost on that list is, of course, the health system. Um, we, that is a huge uh, community benefit. Uh, Tom Harkins will talk more specifically about some of the projects that are happening uh, in the health system. But on an annual basis, we provide millions of dollars of indigent care, um, basically for free. Uh, to accommodate uh, the less fortunate uh, economically in our communities. Uh, but in addition to that, the health system is there for you and me. Uh, it's there for the Commonwealth of Virginia, and it's also beyond the Commonwealth of Virginia that we do serve some. Uh, but that health system is there also, of course, and, and uh, its origins are in educating the future physicians and nurses uh, for the Commonwealth. As a lot of us grow older, everyone's growing older, but as a lot of us get into that uh, boomer age older, uh, there's going to be increasing need for nursing staff and for uh, physicians, uh, physicians of the, the family practice sort as well as the specialty sort, and we do all of those things 
and are under pressure from the Commonwealth, if not the nation, to continue to accelerate the provisions for those uh, in medicine and nursing. And of course, we do have um, uh, athletics and recreation facilities, and inclusive in that, of course, is, is a facility like the John Paul Jones Arena, uh, which certainly does accommodate Cavalier basketball, but it also accommodates a variety of, of community-related uh, activities, uh, some of which are very well known in terms of the concert uh, and so on, some of which are less well known in terms of convocations uh, for community groups and uh, of various sorts. And uh, Last but not least, again, as we bring more students here, we have to provide them adequate support and services uh, for counseling and the like. And even building we're in, uh, you can notice the plaster is falling in this room, uh, is scheduled for a major renovation, a series of renovations over the next five years. So that's not necessarily growth, but it's certainly change in accommodation of, of uh, growth and change. Um, and part of that, process of accommodating that growth, we've developed uh, the grounds plan, which was approved by the Board of Visitors in, in principle and in um, fact uh, earlier this year. Uh, the hallmark of that grounds plan you can see here is sustainability, which links the other guiding principles uh, that you see in this slide, inclusive of preservation, connectivity, environment, uh, multidisciplinary learning, and the context, which includes our communities. Uh, and by that, I, I said that plural. Uh, we think of ourselves as part of uh, not only Charlottesville and Albemarle, but uh, a greater region. Uh, the health system is now, of course, more, even more established in that greater region and will continue to do so. But you'll see increasingly outreach programs uh, from various uh, departments uh, at the university that will be reaching out into the greater uh, community itself. The, Part of the grounds plan that I want to emphasize today is it's not a conventional uh, land use plan or a campus plan that has specific siting of, of um, uh, maybe sorts of structures in the next 20 years. It's more about a process. It's about a process that will be and is a part of how we do business every day, which takes into account uh, simplistically in this diagram or cartoon opportunities and constraints. The constraints we see are uh, first and foremost brought out by our first uh, ever uh, accommodation of a biohabitat uh, survey of all the lands owned by the University of Virginia and the University of Virginia's foundation. Uh, that was done by a group called NatureServe, which is a uh, adjunct or was formerly an adjunct of the Nature Conservancy. Uh, they did that with the best information available in the Commonwealth and in the United States uh, and basically helped us to uh, document um, what are our most sensitive biological areas. Not surprisingly, they're the uplands and the stream valleys. Uh, but in addition to that, we looked at all the, the creatures, large and small and, and the like, and looked at how they may be fostered and preserved uh, as part of our future planning. In addition, we looked, we have completed two years ago a historic preservation framework plan. Uh, so in a constraint attitude, we are preserving the best of our historic structures and have a process to evaluate those uh, others of the 128 to 100 and, uh, plus structures that are 40 years and older that we evaluate in terms of their historic significance. Later on, I'll touch on the fact that we also want to accommodate the fact that they have embodied energy and from the standpoint of sustainability, whether or not you like the looks of them is secondary to what their practicality is in terms of reuse as well. Uh, the opportunities here are not simply uh, program opportunities, but also look at, for example, transit routes uh, that exist, infrastructure that exists, so that rather than expanding uh, further, we would try to utilize the existing infrastructure uh, to its uh, maximum capacity or its expandable capacity. Uh, that strategy, of course, is typically called infill. And so the, the core of the grounds plan 2008 is about an infill strategy in which for the next 20 years, uh, even under various uh, 
uh, scenarios of growth, some more um, assertive than others, that we can accommodate that growth within our own property, within the, uh, the bypass, if you will, and it will be an infill and redevelopment strategy in total. So with that, looking at what that means, um, we look at what our existing stock of facilities are, and we say, what are the advantages of adapting uh, historic structures? Well, they are, obviously, it's a sustainable practice to reuse what you already have. Um, here is Garrett Hall. It was originally designed as the first freestanding refectory or dining hall for the institution by Stanford White in the early 20th century. Uh, it's gone through several lives, including being administrative functions, including uh, finance and audit. Uh, it's currently being used by the College of Arts and Sciences, and they will shortly move their associate uh, deans over into Monroe Hall, uh, right outside the door here, which is also a historic structure that's being renovated currently, formerly the home of the Commerce School. Uh, so Garrett will then enter, it, if you will, its fourth life cycle, uh, this time being the home of the Batten School of Leadership and Public Policy. Next is uh, the Rugby Faculty Apartments, now called the Rugby Administrative Building. Uh, it's most of you associate it with the building next to Beta Bridge, the place that gets painted every night. Uh, this building has been partially occupied for the last uh, seven years, uh, but has, uh, is about to uh, be renovated uh, as administrative offices. Uh, it will again save all of that structure uh, and adapt it uh, f with a lower energy use than it had before it was closed and uh, will uh, be a major um, uh, benefit to uh, space needs that we have in administrative functions at the, at the university. Again, it's a significant historic structure that will be reused now for its third life cycle. Uh, again, we look at non-historic structures, although some would argue with me most won't, uh, New Cabell Hall uh, is sometimes uh, not the poster child of preservation, but uh, the poster child of what might have not been great about 1950s architecture. There are some of us that think uh, that there are some redeeming attributes to it, but the most uh, architecturally, but the most significant redeeming attribute is it's nearly 160,000 gross square feet, a very stable, well-built, strong, reusable space, and that's what we intend to do with it. And the state agreed with us, uh, and we are now in the process of completing schematic design uh, to reuse this structure, uh, w which will continue to be used by the College of Arts and Sciences and will be the home of the dean's office, as well as a number of departments, and include renovations that will uh, uh, allow for state-of-the-art uh, teaching and research in the humanities. Um, again, it will be less costly to do this, uh, sustainable in practice, and uh, in the end we will certainly use much lower energy than those hundreds of window air conditioners that are now uh, protruding from almost every window in the building. Another ugly duckling um, in some people's mind is um, McLeod Hall. Uh, it's been the home of the nursing program. Uh, we just opened a new nursing building across the street a few weeks ago. Uh, we're now going to renovate this building that even as recently as five years ago when I arrived here was on the list of to be eliminated. Uh, again, structurally sound, maybe not the finest building in terms of its aesthetic, uh, but it is a sound building and it can be repaired, it can be conditioned uh, to such a degree that it will serve another life cycle for the um, School of Nursing and their expanded program, which again goes back to my initial comments about the pressure for additional nurses in the Commonwealth and nationwide. Next. Um, another little cartoon that shows this redevelopment strategy and how as we do program new space to accommodate expansion or improvements in facilities, uh, that we're uh, working with those redevelopment zones and uh, considering the outcome of that both in terms of not only the architectural character, but from a planning perspective, uh, the effects that it will have on the systems, the infrastructure, and to make the whole of the university work better in this infill, uh, rather than to be something disparate and uh, cause uh, some sort of a problem in a given area. So 
looking at these things, uh, here are two examples of infill structures that are just opened, the new school of nursing. Uh, one of the strategies here with that grand central stair is to encourage health. Uh, lots of walking up and down rather than using the elevator. You, you, the added benefit is you get to meet your colleagues. Uh, the additional added benefit is you get to see the activity in the building and in the evening when a lot of people are walking around the health system, you have the borrowed light from the building going out. So we're trying to get a win-win, bring the natural light in in a day, take the artificial light that's necessary at night and spill it into the street to make everything more safe and uh, feel uh, more friendly. Uh, likewise, uh, over in the Arts Precinct, uh, Ruffin Hall, uh, brand new Studio Arts building, uh, somewhat similar purposes in an area that again has a lot of 24-hour activity associated with the arts, drama, uh, and architecture. Next, uh, another cartoon we have of, and I use that in the, the fondest sense of the term, because uh, my colleague who's about to come up here is the author of these. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the purpose of this is to say once we have an idea for a new facility uh, and we know how we're going to pay for it uh, and we don't go beyond that point, we don't just wishfully think these, we have to have a way of funding them, we then need to move on to where might that project go and then how would we uh, select the specific site. And uh, you can see we're putting an emphasis on pedestrian accessibility. Uh, as well as preserving and enhancing the green space that's here. So our goal uh, and the stated goal in the grounds plan is to, to basically keep the ground area coverage of the university as it is today while still increasing the amount of square footage and the population that's here. And we believe, as I told you before, we can do that and we've modeled it in many ways. So with that, here are our um, typical siting criteria. These are used on every project. I won't go through them in detail, uh, but again, they really emphasize the notion of sustainability when you think about it from the fact of the three E's, right? Environment, uh, equity, and economy. So all of those three things go into forming our, the core of our analysis as we site new structures. And two new ones that are under construction right now, uh, the, for the School of Education, the Bavaro Building, uh, it is, uh, which uh, Andrew will talk to you about, we're certifying, uh, base certifying lead on every one of our new structures. We now have nearly 30 in process. Uh, we're hopeful that a number of those will help hit silver and uh, one or two, three may hit gold. But our target is to get everything not just the new buildings, but all the renovations, all the buildings here, all the buildings at the College at Wise, any of the places the University of Virginia has a facility. Uh, so this one, uh, we're pretty sure will be a silver. And uh, again, it's allowing us to bring the ed school back into one place, as well as to accommodate the future educators of the Commonwealth and the, the nation. And uh, the South Lawn uh, uh, followed um, Daily, I'm sure, if any of you want to, you can find uh, the websites for these. We have webcams on both of these buildings. Uh, if you're really curious about watching the contractors go at it, uh, you can. The most exciting thing for me, anyway, recently was to see the steel completed for the terrace across Jefferson Park Avenue. Uh, we're anticipating silver lead with the South Lawn and have our fingers crossed beyond that. The last slide I wanted to show you um, is the the redevelopment zones themselves. This is basically our grounds plan. You do not see a set of little building structures on here like little site plans or anything. This is emblematic of the process. This is saying that we will work within our boundaries. We will accommodate this in a sensitive and sustainable way.